Please turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. And I'll read about five or six verses in here, bearing down the entire passage that I have listed. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give good doctrine, forsake not my law. I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me, he taught me also, and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither declare or decline from the words of my mouth. Then dropping to verse 10, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now, Father, I pray that you would open our hearts, and may your Holy Spirit be our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. A number of years ago, Billy Graham made an astute statement. He said, a good father is probably one of the most unsung and unnoticed uh, people in the entire United States, and yet one of the most needed and the most strong. A good man is hard to find. And may God give us good Christian men. And I want to speak primarily, not to fathers, but to all Christian men. And see what God has to say to us here. This is Father's Day, but we honor all Christian men, whether they are a father or not. In the text, Solomon is speaking about his father and praising God for his father. But he said also in verse 3, and I want you to notice this, I was my father's son. But you see, David had many sons. David had many wives. And it was not a family structure like we know today in our families, where we get together and the family gets around the table at supper time. I know for you folks that got class at dinner time. But we, we have a family gathering like that, you know? No, it wasn't this way. Because he had too many individual families and they had their apartments. And, and uh, Solomon was raised primarily by his mother. And the king just went about his business as he wanted. And he had some of the fellows around him for, for supper, you know, and, and all. But Solomon said, in spite of that, he said, my father gave me good instruction. But notice what he said, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. And Bathsheba, in spite of the, the, the thought that comes to our mind immediately about her, was apparently an excellent mother. And Solomon's school was the heart of this woman. And in spite of the fact that later Solomon got away from the Lord, he had a good start and a good understanding and a good beginning. But in the Old Testament, the father, and it's supposed to be that way today, was the family priest. In other words, he's the one that read the Bible. He's the one that said, children, Family, we're going to church. And my dad was quite a guy. I mean, he was a great man. Bud didn't know him, I don't think, just barely knew him, but Bud's dad he used to work for my dad. And Bud's dad thought the world of my dad. He was a great man. He was a tall man, my, a man like myself, and handsome and good looking and all of that. But he, he, he had his head screwed on tight, you know, and he, he went to church and he took us to church and he led us into things of the Lord and if we got out of line we didn't stay out of line very long because he knew how to dust off the posterior of our trip, uh, trousers and he wasn't ashamed to do this or afraid to do this but he guided us in the right way and he would counsel he would counsel me that some of my greatest memories like I said earlier were to sit there in the kitchen when he was an old man my age but he was an old man and I was just a, a sprout coming up in the things of the Lord. And he had wisdom way beyond my years, even though I hadn't been to Bible college and all. He had wisdom in the things of the Lord. But the father in the home, in the Bible, is not only the leader, not only the one that says, we need to do this, we will do this, but also that doesn't mean he's boss. Now, you gals have got the right idea. The man is the head of the house, but you're the neck that turns the head. And you know what I'm talking about. But he was in the family priest or priest.
prophet. And he's the one that was to keep the family on track and the laws of God. And dad in the home is important. About a third to one half of the homes in the United States now have no father figure. And even for those that have, in many, many cases, he's just a whip. Mom has to do everything. Don't get between dad and, and the television when the football game is on or when the Tigers are playing. And very little time with most dads nowadays, very little time is spent with the kids. In fact, I was reading one article where it said that in most cases, the dad does not spend more than eight minutes a day with individual children. Now that's not enough time. That's putting the whole burden of it all onto mom. And thank God for godly mothers. Thank God. I mean, I loved my dad. And my dad, I, I looked up to him. But my mother was the love of my life. She was a great woman. And her Christianity I never saw one flaw in. And to this day, I miss my mom. But getting back, getting back to the thought of the text, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, and verse 4, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Sometimes, dads only holler at kids. You do this or I'll kill you. And then you don't keep your word. If you tell them you're going to kill them, you better do it. But, but, then, but then the slug gets a hit. And that's not right. I've got a son-in-law down front, and I'm very proud of him. I mean, there are a few things I've changed about it, but, but uh, he, he's a good dad. He's a, he's a good dad. I mean, he invests time with his kids. Two of the kids, the shave heads, were at camp this last week. So did you finally get to take the youngest one out for, Darren out for a camp night? Mm -hmm. And uh, he shows them how to do things. He tells them how to do it. And, you know, he's a, he's a good dad. Now, I've said all of that. And uh, uh, just feathering the nest because they've got a, base, a basement apartment that someday Ma and I might need. <laughs> I'll never grab that. So I'm just trying to, you know, grease them up and butter him up a little bit. But, but folks, Job was concerned about his family. And he said, I would do sacrifice and plead with God and pray for my family. I don't know if my sons have sinned against God. And so he prayed for them. And God used this man. But family is a God-given responsibility. But I want to broaden that out to the church and Christian men. Guys, your wives and the Christian women in this church have carried this church on their backs for so long. And God needs men, Christian men, that will stand up and carry the Lord. If Christian women were suddenly taken out of the churches across the United States, many of them were closed because the men wouldn't know what to do. And thank God for you women. But I like that what he said in verse 3. I was my father's son. And I'm proud of being a hill. I'm glad that my name isn't stumped, though that was my mother's name. It was a great name. And, and I go down to that little town in Indiana, South Whitney, Indiana, and I go across the cemetery and I see stump, 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 stump and there's some great people in that in my ancestry on that side I'm proud of them fine Christian people back through the years but I raised the banner high I'm a you know I'm proud of my dad I'm proud of what he gave us I'm proud of what he did for us I'm proud of how he led us you see back through all of those years except for the war years World War II that's the big one you know Archie Bunker's big war when uh, Dad, we moved to Kalamazoo, and Dad worked seven days a week at Bell Telephone. He was the guard, and uh, I don't know if somebody had come up there, you know, during those years and tried to get in and do anything. He could get the gun out of his holster, and you probably shot his foot, but there he was. He was the guard, and he couldn't take it to church, us to church, but he made sure that we went. But the rest of the time, he took us to church. He drove us to church, and he stayed, and he was there, and that... That has meant a lot to me back through the years. But too much of the time now, fathers, don't spend any quality time with their family. But now, folks, 
I want to bring it back as I said once before. God is looking for Christian men who will step up to the plate. I read in the book of the uh, book of Exodus or uh, the book of Ezekiel in the 22nd chapter. God said, I sought for a man among them that would make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Thank God. Thank God. This last week, Lynn led a person to the Lord. That's what we all ought to be doing. We all ought to be saying, God, what do you want me to do? God, I want to be your man. God looking for humble men that, that will bow the Lordship of Jesus. Men that will cry over souls. Men that will pray out to God and say, Lord, I, I humble myself before you. I, I just fall before you. I want you to fill me, break me, mold me, make me into a man that you can. I had a phone call this week, yesterday in fact, from a friend of mine who is a pastor over in Benton Harbor. And uh, his daughter-in-law has been very ill with cancer. And he called me yesterday and said, I lean past this afternoon about 3.30. And then he went on to say how his wife is in Florida with the family. Went on to say, and I know this family. I've been in their home. I held meetings with him on three different occasions, and I was in their home. I knew the young man. I, di I didn't know the daughter-in-law that well, the one who passed away. I only met her a couple of times. But he went on to say, and his, he was choking up, you know, and he was saying how, how Peter, the, the husband of this woman, just went ballistic, and the 16-year-old son went to Germany or went through Europe with a choir and he didn't want to go but his mama said yes go ahead anyway I'll be all right you go and told how just an hour before his mother died he had called from Europe from Germany and had talked to his mother and and I thought about that young man over there wanting to be home so bad and I just broke down crying sometimes I mean I try not to be around anybody when I'm crying especially my wife I don't want her to see this. I don't know why I'm here about something like that. But, oh, we need people who will be broken before God. We need men who will be strong and stand tall on their knees and not put all of our Christianity in our wife's name. Joshua, right at the end of his life, here was an old man said to the people of Israel, all right, you're in the land. Now follow the Lord and worship the Lord. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He would not listen to Joshua that said that. The old boy said this. We're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to lead the way as long as I'm here. And God helping me, I'm going to be a man of God. And God is looking for, for a man with desire to be God's man. A man with, with dedication to be that man of God. A man of integrity. A good man. A, a person that that people can look up to and say, he's a fine man, he's a Christian man, he's a godly man. And when somebody says something to your grandsons, is that your granddad? Then they'll just stick out their chest and not their tongue. Or is that your dad? They'll stick out their chest and not their tongue because they're proud of who dad is and what dad is doing. Now, Solomon got away from his dad's instructions David followed the Lord all the way through his life, just hitting the, hitting the mud once that we know of in his life. But Solomon started out so beautifully. He had a beautiful experience with God. And he was a real man of God and followed God. But then he got womanizing. Had so many wives and so many concubines and all. And, and they turned his heart away from God. And that's sad. That's too bad. God needs people today who will take a stand, these men that will stand tall for God on their knees, men who aren't afraid to be broken before God and say, God, I'm nothing but thank you and fill me and strengthen me with your strength. Will you be that man? You're so needed today. God needs men. I can remember back there in World War II, the emphasis was on young men going into the service. 
though some young women went. Uncle Sam needs you. And there was a picture like that pointing out. Uncle Sam needs you. And God needs you. Will you answer the call? Will you dedicate your life to the Lord Jesus? No holds barred. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we can call you Father and that we can have a relationship with you that's wonderful. We just ask you, Father, that this could be enriched and strengthened in each of our lives. And we're praying that if there's one here that has never accepted you as Savior, man or woman, boy or girl, has never accepted you as Savior, that even today they'll look up and say, Father, I trust you now. I thank you that Jesus died for me and I accept him as my Savior. Forgive my sin and come into my heart. But Father, I pray too that every man here and every woman as well would say, Lord, I surrender to you. I want you to be my all in all. And Father, I want to look upon you as the strength of my life as I give myself to you in Jesus' name. Amen.